When is the start date for Nigerians to take advantage of, um, you know, this to come convert their vehicles to the CNG mode? Help us clarify uh, that angle. Yes, I mean, like I said, there's already 14 centers, as at last can you probably increase in every day because um, additional centers have been launched. Um, you can schedule, um, and you could have been scheduling for the last two, three, four years since these centers have been running. A lot of Nigerians are already benefiting from using CNG. Of course, our work here, the initiative is to popularize it, is to roll it out national, uh, uh, nationally, is to also support and uh, facilitate, facilitate investment into the sector, uh, which allows the infrastructure, including these conversion workshops and the refueling stations to, to spring up across the country to support the fleet that we've incentivized by the program. And of course, to also set up and facilitate a regulatory framework to ensure that we have zero incidents in the sector. So as it is today, uh, it's not as if there's one specific day that, oh, everybody suddenly can start converting. Uh, conversion workshops are already springing up across the country, across the neighborhood, where you can find it. We will very soon be launching the MyCNG app that will show you where you can actually convert your vehicle closest to you. And also, as we add new partners on the network, we'll also be adding them to the app. So this is what we are rolling out. And uh, as I said, it's, it's already going on. Folks are already registering and leveraging and, and, and getting their cars converted. And, uh, and, and, and the good news is that this is already available in some major cities in Nigeria. But our work is to make sure that it's national, supported, and, uh, uh, and partnering with the private sector. And that is what we are, we are up to at the PCNGI. You've probably answered my question as regards uh, those who will be uh, helping in this conversion and, dis uh, and uh, dispensing uh, the, the CNG, making it sure that making sure that it goes, goes round among Nigerians. But then I'm still big on the, the safety issue because if you look at recently, uh, we were talking about the counterfeiting of products, medicine and all of that. Uh, that story, that news is rife now uh, as regards those who are counterfeiting products. And we also know about adulterated petroleum um, where you know people mixing petroleum and it's not in its pristine form. Are you worried about the quality control? What, what are the things that you feel the government is putting in place to ensure that the quality control is there to mitigate against adulteration? And those who will be selling, um, you said the, 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 the gas cylinder will be, uh, is, is definitely bulletproof. Is definitely bulletproof. So are you worried about those who will be selling inferior, uh, inferior products regarding ensuring that CNG uh, proliferates the, the markets in Nigeria? Thank you very much. Wonderful question. Um, yes, uh, as, as a government, we want to ensure zero incidents in the sector. Mm. Uh, safety is our watchword, and to ensure pure safety and reliability of what is being done in the sector. is the reason why we've been working in the last couple of months to set up the regulatory framework. You know, I remember that I told you our mandate is, is, is trial. One, to incentivize. Secondly, that's to incentivize the adoption. Secondly, is to facilitate investment uh, into the sector. And lastly, is to set up the regulatory framework uh, to ensure this sector is properly policed. Yes, so we are uh, not just worried. We are being, taking proactive steps to ensure that the proper regulatory framework uh, is set up for the sector. The, the, we, we convened an interagency uh, committee uh, that is already working on very clear uh, guidelines and regulation uh, to be issued by the Standards Organization of Nigeria. That uh, committee was launched about a couple of weeks ago, if, you, if you're watching the news. And uh, more than 22 agencies working with stakeholders, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, uh, uh, RTN and NATO, and all the uh, Ministry of Transport and all the, all the folks around the table, including your FRSE, Federal Road Safety Commission, uh, the Nigerian Auto Development and Design Council, NMPDRA that works on the hydrocarbon aspect of it to ensure the safety and hand of the handling of hydrocarbon and the discharge of it at the NMPDRA licensed refueling stations that will be discharging this CNG and to ensure that the product, like you said, is, not, is, is the product. I mean, uh, that you're not calling LPG, CNG and vice versa and to ensure that you are using uh, 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 what you say you're using and even to ensure the safety of the conversion process because let's remember that when the vehicle is already inspected, approved for sale as from the OEM, uh, the moment you convert them, you also need to make sure that they are re-inspected and they are properly converted uh, up to standard. And so we are setting up that process and we are ensuring also that the equipment, especially, things, uh, 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 especially the conversion kits 
also meets international standard and safety standard as well as the cylinders. You mentioned about the cylinders to make sure they are actually bulletproof, but even beyond that is to make sure that you are using the right cylinder. You're not using LPG cylinder or welded cylinder for CNG. CNG cylinders are uh, uh, extruded cylinders, uh, very thick, and also, uh, also have a different level of inspection requirements for use. And so this is something that uh, we take very seriously and we are working on. All right. Uh, well, it's, it's also a follow-up now, talking about the need to also ensure critical infrastructure to enable this uh, drive are uh, essentially achieved. Because, you know, for some observers, uh, keen observers, actually, uh, that has been one of the reasons why uh, the main potential of, uh, you know, our gas imputes in Nigeria have not been uh, been utilized over the years. But, you know, this is this is fine in, in print and, you know, so far so good, you would say. But in terms of, you know, the enabling infrastructure to see this through uh, on a national scale as is intended, you know, help us to also understand, you know, what how you are seeking to achieve uh, this uh, aim. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, earlier this week, uh, we launched uh, uh, with our, uh, in Abuja here. On, on Tuesday, we had uh, an all-day engaging session with the private sector. And the reason is very obvious. Uh, we'll need an investment of up to a trillion naira in the sector in the next five years. Uh, all of that cannot come from government. Uh, if we are going to meet the needs of a million vehicles and we are going to also ensure that we provide the gas that they need, which will be uh, in, the, in the upward of over 100 mm scoff per day. Uh, we need the private sector to invest uh, not just in gas fines and gas supplies. We also need the private sector to invest in the infrastructure, the infrastructure of gas processing, the infrastructure of uh, last mile uh, uh, pipe gas, the infrastructure of... Um, uh, uh, mini LNG plants that should be located at least one in every state in Nigeria, the infrastructure of uh, regasification plants that take that further into the interlands, the infrastructure of CNG trucking, the infrastructure of refueling stations, the infrastructure of conversion workshops, even the infrastructure of manufacturing the conversion kits and the cylinders. A lot of these things need to be domesticated and this is because there's a huge opportunity here to serve Nigeria's uh, CNG sector and there's a huge opportunity for uh, for the private sector to invest. We believe strongly that the private sector will be reliable partners in this process uh, to bridge the infrastructure gap that exists. We are also doing that, of course, by rolling out incentives. The president has already announced that there is a, uh, there's, there's a waiver, a duty waiver, a uh, custom duty waiver on all CNG uh, uh, equipment and, uh, and, uh, and vehicles, as the case may be. That is one. There's also a VAT exemption that has already been announced by the chairman of the PCNGI that also happens to be the uh, executive chairman of the FRS, courtesy of the president of presidential approval. All of these are important incentives for investors, and even more will be rolling out to ensure Very that we quickly. can bridge this crucial and critical infrastructure gap to deliver CNG to all Nigerians. Very quickly, let me quickly um, squeeze in this question. Um, yeah, you mentioned the federal government making sure that too many cars are you know, captured in this initiative. Mm. Uh, I remember sometime in October, we've got somebody from the NNPC who said that it's going to cost about 350,000 Naira to convert your vehicle. Talk to us about how much it's going to cost uh, and how, much the, how many cars the federal government is looking to help in. I think it's about 500,000. I'm not sure of the figure. Because even in Lagos alone, there are 5 million vehicles more than 5 million vehicles, and Nigeria has about 11.8 million or thereabouts as at 2023 data. Uh, how much does it cost very quickly? Yes, uh, the, range, the, the, cost, the actual cost of conversion depends on the engine size uh, and the type of vehicle that you're you converting. Uh, yes, so the range will be between 250 to about um, half a million naira, depending on the uh, type of vehicle you're converting. Uh, but uh, with, with respect to that cost, like I already mentioned before, and I will say it again, if you're saving about 50%, something, even, it can be less than 30% of that of foiling cost. You'll make that money back in, in about three to six months. So it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer really to convert because the vehicle is just thereafter. You can continue to, uh, you continue to foil it flexibly. And uh, your maintenance of that vehicle will also reduce drastically since you're going to be utilizing a cleaner form of fuel uh, for, for that vehicle. So I think in the long run, it is of immense benefit to all Nigerians. 
uh, regardless of the cost. Now, in terms of what the government is going to do to help that, about 55,000 conversion kits are being ordered under the palliative program uh, by the, uh, with the PCNGI helping to deploy and to distribute those. Uh, the terms of deployment is going to be rolled out very soon that will enable Nigerians to understand the incentives that is going to be associated with that. It, is not, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's going to be free, but it's going to be, by and large, the goal is going to be to drive down the cost of adoption as much as possible for these 55,000 right. vehicles that will be targeted at the mass transit sector. Again, the focus of the president is to ensure that the, that the, that, that the common man, those people who are using the, 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 the mass transit fleet that are commuting from home out to work every day, benefit directly from the CNG initiative. Right. And this is the goal of this program. Uh, we will leave or rest this conversation at this point. Their program director, Presidential CNG Initiative, Michael Oluwagbemi, we say a big thank you uh, for these uh, explanations that you thank have you. made about uh, this initiative. And by the way, congratulations uh, on your new role. We hope that uh, you know this will indeed be a successful uh, project on your part and indeed every other stakeholder. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much.